how are we all? Paul79 here, I hope you're safe and well. Welcome to part three of my uh, GT3 RS replica home EV build. Now, on part two, um, I took out the gearbox from the Porsche Boxster, which was all fine. So now on this part, I'm gonna show you me taking the engine out, which um, is a much bigger job um, and I'm a little nervous, but I've got my trusty Porsche uh, Boxster book here. Um, it's really good actually, because it breaks down everything on what you need to disconnect. Cause that's the, that's the main thing is disconnecting all the right things potentially in the right order, etc., for you to then drop the engine. So what I've done is over the next few minutes, um, I've sort of shown you all the sort of stages of the disconnecting of the various things. And yeah, hopefully I can get this engine out. Never done this before, so uh, wish me luck. See you in a bit, bye. Okay, before we uh, start looking at the engine, let me sh tell you a couple of things I've done since uh, we last, uh, last spoke so first of all um the mounts for the gearbox which are these triangle things that bolt to there these things these big mushrooms taking them off because we don't need them they just get in the way um and then also most importantly <laughs> i've put some foam on those uh, uh bumper bar uh, brackets because unfortunately um I cracked my head on one of them and cut it quite badly. So uh, I thought I'd better put those things on um, before I do it again. Um, proper Frank Spencer. So in terms of the engine, so I've dropped the, I've t uh, flushed out all the coolant from it. If you look underneath here, you can just see a couple of bowls, uh, silver bowls. Basically there is no coolant drain plug on the 987. There is on a 986, so what you actually, all you have to do is actually just disconnect the hoses and the coolant uh, just rushes out. Um, you also, the um, coolant top up uh, reservoir, which is was here, you wanna take the lid off that as well to let some air in the system and it will drain it from there as well. But yes, if you look on the last video, you would have seen the coolant reservoir top up tank and, um, the oil top up tank that was sort of sitting here because it had been extended back by the previous owner, um, which I don't think you really need to do anyway, but that's all gone because uh, in theory, I don't think we're gonna need that. Um, <clears throat> well, certainly not at the moment and uh, it's all connected to the engine. So to get rid of that, so you can see here, you can see some pipes where the various uh, coolant and oil pipes um, connected to. And then, ladies and gentlemen, we have the engine. So, um, I've got a list of things to go through um, to uh, start uh, the process of uh, dropping it out of the car. Um, this particular thing is, is where the oil uh, top-up uh, pipe goes through into the boot of the car, so I've just taken that out already. Um, disconnected the battery, because you should always do that. And then I think one of the first jobs is take off the MAF sensor and uh, yeah, go through the list and just unplug various bits and bobs, disconnect various hoses and uh, we'll be well on our way to, uh, to getting it done. Oh, and I also taken off the, uh, the shifter and the gear cables. Um, I did that um, at the end of uh, the last session. So yeah, so now you're up to date. So I've unplugged the engine harness from the DME, um, which is this thing here. I'd take off the wall and take off the earth strap. It had a few connections in there and two in there. So basically, oops, this is the wiring harness for the engine. So what we need to do now, you've got a lovely big grommet there. You need to just push that grommet through into the engine bay. And I'll just do that and tie it up. So the next thing I have to take off the drive belt. That was really easy. You've got all these various pulleys here, etc. This is the idler. You see you've got a big nut there. All you need to do is put a 24 mil socket on there and turn it anti uh, clockwise, not anti-clockwise, clockwise, and it just moves it and releases the tension. And then the belt just comes off. Easy. Okay, time for an update. Um, right, so the the MAF sensor 
is been unplugged and I've removed the snorkel. You can see that there. There's the uh, there's the uh, funnel or the tube that then runs into the air box. Um, I thought about taking the air box out as well at the same time, but it looks like it's very difficult. Um, I've removed the air filter there. That's just uh, down there. So that's uh, what I've done so far at the top. Just want to show you. Um, just going to show you underneath the car. I've got the four hoses um, disconnected. Oh, excuse me. So we've got yeah, one, two, and then two little ones there. So that's all the coolant hoses disconnected. Um, whether I'll reuse those, uh, probably not. I might just cut them off. Um, so that's done there. But what I have noticed is. The way my engine is sitting at the moment, it's probably not going to clear this bar. Now in the book, it doesn't talk about removing it, but I think I'm going to have to. So, um, and then another annoying thing I've noticed is my ramp has this bar across here. You see where my lights are? And I don't think I can get that out. <laughs> Why is that important? Well, the annoying thing is, is it means my trolley can only go so far because the wheels will get stuck. But I think we'll get the bulk of the engine on the sump onto the trolley. But you can see here, this is this safety strap that is, that is bolted to this bar. So I'm gonna to have to get everything ready to drop the engine and then raise up the engine and remove this bar and then should be able to clear it. Okay, time for an update. Um, so, what I've done is I've got my uh, table out. I've taken off the handle so I can slide it as far as I can. And then I've supported the engine there with those uh, black blocks there. So you can see now the clutch is not touching that bar anymore. So ultimately I can take that out. Um, not ready yet though to do that. Um, I've just done quite a fiddly job, which was remove the air conditioning condenser. Right, so this is this thing here, right? Now, if you look back when I removed the belt, it was one of these here, the, the belt went round it. But basically that bolts into the engine, okay? Um, it's got three bolts, one, two, three. These are quite easy to get to from the front, but that one is a right difficult one. Basically, it's actually getting the, um, the spanner on it because you have to uh, do it through the manifold here anyway so i've taken that out the reason why you take that out is so you don't need to disconnect the um the aircon so you just sort of have it out the way and have it just resting here while you lower the engine down um and in order to actually get to that thing, right, you have to remove the um, power steering top-up reservoir, which is this thing. Uh, you see that pipe there, that open pipe, that basically fits into that. It's sort of like a cap and then a reservoir on top with another cap. But anyway, so that's gone, all right? Uh, there was a power cable here as well that I disconnected um, and I actually had to move that thing out of the way while I guided out this uh, compressor here. So we're getting there. So we're nearly ready to drop the engine. It's quite unstable now when it's not supported from the bottom. However, um, you know I said that I've taken the wheels off and put them in storage and they're never going to come back on for ages. Well, <laughs> I've got to put them back on. Why? Well, I've got one more thing to disconnect, and that is basically the power steering uh, lines. And annoyingly, they are under here, right? And the problem is, is because I've got this jack uh, ramp that's like this, I can't get to them. <laughs> so what I'm going to have to do is... Um, put the car, put the wheels on the car and put some blocks under so then I can lower it completely down, including the ramp and then I can get to it to undo them. But yeah, a bit of a schoolboy. Apart from that, I think we're going all right. Anyway, so I better get on with that. See you later. So, 
we're almost there all that needs to come out now is the front engine mount so the engine is ready to drop um, I've taken out that brace bar and uh, yeah a um, bit nervous um, but yeah here goes <laughs> Oh, so she's finally out. It was a bit of a job, I'll be honest with you. Um, she started dropping fine, but then she unfortunately got caught on the edge of the ramp there, the corner. Um, so it actually became a bit of a nightmare to wiggle her out. But in the end, I had to undo this side part of the, um, of the chassis, um, which is fine, it's got to come off anyway. But yeah, it was a bit of a stressful end to a, a very successful day. But anyway, she's out now. So yeah, there you go. Nice big open space there for some batteries. Oh, right, I'm absolutely exhausted. I've no idea what I look like. So I probably look like a right mess. So, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to have an Indian takeaway. See you later. Bye. So it's the next day and I've just looked back at the footage and I thought I couldn't end like that because I, I was like very tired. So anyway, it's all done. So um, not too bad. Um, the problem I had was my ramp was stopping the engine drop, dropping cleanly out. So yeah, word of advice, you know, if you're going to do this, you want to position your car so it's got a bit more clearance. Um, ideally, I should have a two post thing with the arms where they just come out like that and lift the car up. But anyway, it's done now. There was no dramas. Everything's fine. Nothing's damaged. And uh, it's not going back in again. So, uh, <laughs> so there you go. I don't think I'll be taking another engine out anytime soon. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And you can follow me uh, on this uh, home EV build uh, journey. And I will see you on part four. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.